Hi, my name is Jiyeon Park. I'm a doctor student in the Faculty of Education and Social Work. Today, I'd like to talk about my exploratory qualitative study, which is the first part of my doctoral research. The main purpose of this study was to explore and compare the cultural conceptions of success in Korea and New Zealand. In this study, semi-structured individual interviews were conducted with a total of 20 Korean and European New Zealand University students in Korea and New Zealand. I'm so delighted that I can participate in a variety showcase and exposure because I found that and believe that this category would be the most suitable for me to maximize the quality of my research data. Because what I wanted to do was not only just suggest themes, codes, and quotations that I found from this study, but also suggest the contents, tones, facial expressions, and even feelings that I observed from the interviews. So I will present the findings of this study by using the format of a drama. I will perform as a Korean New Zealander. And this is a part of this drama, part, part of script of this drama. Black part is written by myself. Red part is written by mixing 20 participants' interview transcriptions. So please remind that a majority section of this drama is representing participants' viewpoints, except for the wrap-up and take-home message section of this drama. Now, this is it. Please enjoy this drama, and it's short time. When I was a high school student in Korea, entering a prestigious university was our dream. It was our standard of success. In order to achieve that goal, I need to study at cram schools until midnight. The amount of studying was endless, and there, was, there were never-ending tests. Sometimes I feel nervous. What if my grades go down? How can I see my parents' face? Anyway, I need to endure this time because I believe that I can live a successful, happy, and easy life once I can enter a good university. Luckily, I could enter a so-called good university. Then I experienced a feeling of loss and depression because I realized my life is neither successful nor happy as I expected as I, and as, as I dreamed. Yeah, but I need to endure that time. But yeah, and then I realized that there is a success myth. Somebody told me that if you study hard and if you can, work, uh, if you can enter a good university, your life is successful. But that was not true in my case. Anyway, I realized that my success goal was automatically changed to work in a famous and a good company or find a or find respectable job like a judge or like a doctor. So what I had to do was I need to do my best effort in order to win at a high competition of job employment. So I had, to, I had to get and maintain high level of academic graduates, secondly. And also, I need to have several qualifications that, that approve my abilities. Also, I need to have internship experience, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was under a high, high pressure. I, I had to achieve something more than others. Anyway, I did, because I want to get social reputation and social position. I think in Korea society, Korean people are more concerned about social reputation and social judgment. So sometimes, including me, we, want to, we tend to show off our material wealth in order to get 
positive impression from others. And I think the most powerful and most common success image in Korea society is money. I think there is a common conception that if you have money, you can do anything. If you don't have money, innocence can be guilty. And I think Korean society fosters the idea that more money brings happiness in life. But is that true? I don't think so. My brother works in a very famous company and many people admires, admire his job because he earns a lot of money. But he doesn't, he doesn't look happy at all. He has to overwork almost every day and then he needs to go back to his office early in the morning. I think he sacrificed his present life for his future happiness. Like him, many Koreans think and dream like this. Someday in the future, I will be happy. Yes, someday. And here is another story. As I traveled to New Zealand and began studying here, I realized that the images of success in New Zealand is quite different compared to Korea. Kiwis do not want to sacrifice their present life. Kiwis, I found that Kiwis do want to have current happiness instead of delaying it for the future happiness. And what I observe is another thing that I observed is that Kiwi New Zealanders value work-life balance. So they want to spend enough time with their family and friends instead of working late. And also they want to, uh, they value holidays and travel rather than going to the office or summer. So I think it is sort of about balance. And there's another point that I want to talk about, that is family. I think there is a stereotype that Koreans put a high value on family tie and relationship. Yes, we do. Family is important for Koreans. However, our society is so competitive and our life is so busy, so it is not easy for us to have enough time with family. On the other hand, for Kiwis, it seems that Family is their priority. So having enough time with family members and having a close relationship with them are kind of cultural success image in New Zealand society. Of course, I'm not saying that money and social reputation are not important in New Zealand society. My, uh, my friend told me that, especially nowadays, New Zealand is getting, more, getting toward more business-minded country than it was before. Yeah, certainly, I think so. Money and home ownership are, are important cultural ideas of success in New Zealand society. And another point, I want to talk about social reputation. As you know, New Zealand is quite a sporting nation, so sports success is highly respected. So if one of you are a professional rugby team player, or if you are professional with any sports team, I think many people will respect you. Before I came to New Zealand, Korean culture persuaded me to seek educational success, material success, and social success. So there was comparatively less place that I insist that I want to be happy now because of competition and also, frankly speaking, I don't want to be a loser in the society. So I had to say. But what I found, what I experienced in New Zealand is that money, social reputation are of course important. However, family and self-satisfaction are also important success criteria in New Zealand society. Although I think I'm well settled into New Zealand society and culture, from time to time I feel pressure like, do I study more over the weekends or even on holidays? And sometimes I found that 
I'm more concerned about others' views and judgments instead of my own decision because I have experienced by both Korean and New Zealand culture. Can you imagine that how Koreans can be frustrated when they first came to New Zealand and experienced different culture? Maybe it will take time for them to experience, encounter, and understand different culture in New Zealand society because they were expected a little bit different things when they were in Korea. This is the end of this drama. Before finishing, I would like to introduce a beautiful Korean folk song titled Holo Arirang. The theme of this song is the hope for unification between North and South Korea. But this song is also used for praying peace in the world. I will sing a part of this song in Korean language in the hope for peace and harmony in Aotearoa, New Zealand, where many ethnic groups live together and love together. Arirang, arirang, hullo, arirang. Arirang, go, gero, no more, gaboja. Kadaga, im, dimion, shioga, dorado. I hope that you can get a glimpse of understanding about Korean, Korean culture and their life priorities. Thank you so much for your listening. Do you have any question about my study? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not sure if the microphone works, uh, but uh, I'll go first. So just to pick up on the theme of uh, unification at yeah. the end there, um, I was actually interested more in the kind of, I guess, the tensions and the resistance. And particularly um, with some of the participants in your study, um, if there's any um, tensions between uh, first generation immigrants from Korea to New Zealand and maybe their children who grew up in New Zealand and yeah. some of the, I guess, the different aims and objectives that they have for their lives, if there's kind of any kind of, uh, you know, tensions between parents and, and children mm. and how that comes through in your study. Yeah. In fact, uh, when, I talk, uh, when I talk about participants, I didn't uh, clearly tell you that I recruited two groups of Koreans in New Zealand. One group is, I call them Korean Kiwi. They born in Korea and educated, um, educated from until high school in Korea, and then came to New Zealand for their high, higher education. And another group is Kiwi Korean. They were born in New Zealand and educated only in New Zealand setting, because I want to see whether, because in this study, I asked not only ask about cultural ideas of success, but also asked about personal ideas of success, and I, hypothesize that Korean, Kiwi Korean's ideas of success are more close to Kiwi's ideas of success because they were educated here, um, inculturated here. But why, one interesting point is that Korean Kiwi's ideas of success are more close to Kiwi's ideas of success. This is partly because is that Kiwi, a Korean Kiwi who came to recently made a decision to come to New Zealand by themselves. They, they wanted to come here by their will. But in case of Kiwi Korean participants, they came here by their parents' will. So they, um, and they were, I think they were influenced by their parents. So their ideas of success are more close to Koreans in Korea. So even though they, they were um, inculturated 
in the New Zealand society for a long time, if their parents have Korean style ideas of success, I think their, yeah, their perceptions of success are more in, inclined to Korean. So I think there is a tension between Korean culture and New Zealand culture from Kiwi Korean groups. Yeah. <clears throat> so you um, talk a lot about um, Koreans being influenced by Kiwi culture. Yeah. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts of the reverse of uh, Kiwis themselves being influenced by Korean culture because New Zealand is a very multicultural yeah. country. Yeah. Mm. It's possible because I found that some Kiwi people, Kiwi like K-pop K -pop and K-drama, so they are maybe influenced by that culture, but I'm not quite sure because Korean society is kind of quite minority in New Zealand society. So some of you, some of Kiwi who are really interested in about Korean culture may have similar ideas of success with Koreans in Korea. But I'm not quite sure because in my study, it was not found that point. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering, how long does it take until, um, either as a generation or as a, a migrant coming from Korea to New Zealand, do you start to, to lose some of those um, mm. ideals and sort of traditional values and start going towards um, the New Zealand type of um, ideals for, for success? Yeah, I'm so sorry, but can you please ask me what it's Sure, again? it's, it's for, um, at what point do you, do you start losing some of the um, ideals that you had in Korea and start taking on uh, more New Zealand type ideals for success. So mm -hmm. is that a generation, two generations, or does it, do you just transition from uh, just switching uh, countries? Do you mean I, you want to ask my idea or my opinion? Uh, your opinion. Yeah. I think, so let me talk about my case. I wanted to come here because I, I thought that my lifestyle is more how can I suitable with Kiwis, uh, this culture? So I think I'm quickly adapt to New Zealand culture because this was based on my decision. But if someone persuaded me, you need to go to New Zealand and you need to study here. But in that case, I think there's a possibility that I can reject this culture. So I think it depends on personal, uh, personal decision. But of course, the, the length of residence in New Zealand would be a possible option, a possible factor, because if I live here for a long time, that means I will have more chance to communicate with, kid, uh, communicate with local people, and also I have to use English. So English in Korean is so different. So on the way using of English, I think the ideas of or the lifestyle can be also influenced by using of language. So I think personal decision as well as the lens of residency in New Zealand also can be of possible factors that change individuals' ideas of success. Yeah. How different do you think the perceptions of Kiwi Koreans and Korean Kiwis would be to Koreans still in Korea? Um, how so do you um, are you asking how two Korean groups are different compared to Korean group? Yes. When I ask about personal ideas of success, although I didn't show you in this performance, it was found that they more they are more they tend, uh, they told me that they more value family relationship and their personal selections or personal satisfaction compared to Koreans in Korea because nobody mentioned about family relationship and their personal happiness in, when I asked about what is your personal ideas of success to Koreans in Korea. So that was the biggest difference that I observed. Perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much.